Hello and welcome to the October coffee subscription tasting where I'm going to taste the coffees that we're sending out to all our coffee subscribers who will receive this coffee in the beginning of October, hopefully. We normally send out uh, coffees on the first Wednesday of the month uh, and if you subscribe, you can subscribe to one, two, three, four, five or six bags of coffee. But we normally select three different coffees that we send out, so if you have a four bag subscription for instance you'll get two bags of the first coffee and then a second and a third bag that's different coffees you can uh, pause the subscription anytime you like and uh, you can stop also anytime you like so there's no binding times here cool i have selected three very very nice coffees for you this month and uh, actually some of my favorite coffees uh, which is uh, very nice I think the fall is uh, getting cold, but it's still some time to enjoy some nice and fruity coffees that we normally enjoy during the summer. But I thought this coffee is so good at the moment, so I wanted to send it out to you. So the first coffee we're sending out is a Kenyan coffee. Uh, I know a lot of our followers and subscribers really enjoy Kenyan coffees. And the same with me, it's one of my favorite coffees. This is a SL28 and SL34 variety, mainly, which means you know, maybe some of the farmers who deliver cherries to this washing station, which is part of a cooperative, maybe some of them will grow Ruiru 11 and Batian, but the majority don't because this washing station is located in a very, very high altitude, 1800 meters above sea level, and its name is Karinga. It's actually just uh, maybe an hour drive from Nairobi if there's no traffic, but um, in traffic, of course, you can spend three, four hours <laughs> to drive there. But it's high up in the mountains where most of the farmers, they don't really have too much problems with coffee leaf rust and coffee berry disease. So they still grow the SL34 and SL28 varieties. And that means this coffee is very, very fruity, quite floral and uh, just super sweet and delicious. Uh, SL28 is kind of the most famous variety in Kenya, but you see a lot of the farmers here growing also the older SL34. And the names come from Scott Laboratories, which uh, selected seeds from different places in uh, East Africa and planted them in their variety garden and then kind of selected the best ones based on, you know, drought resistant, production uh, disease resistance and so on. None of these uh, varieties are resistant to leaf rust or coffee berry disease and that means they do have a lot of problems with them. So that's why you see a lot of these new hybrids coming along like Batian, which is developed in Kenya and Ruiru 11 as well, which was developed in Kenya. Uh, if the farmers do a good job with you know, pruning the trees and uh, making sure that they have enough nutrients, then you see these trees produce beautiful coffees. They're quite big trees and they can produce a lot of coffee. In fact, I've actually been to a couple of farms where they produce you know, over 40 and 50 kilos of cherry per tree. And the average production per tree is normally around four kilos. So that means you, they do have potential to produce a lot of coffee. Karinga has been one of my favorite washing stations for a couple of years. Um, they produce very consistent, high quality coffees, very fruity. And uh, I think the profile is quite kind of different from other coffees that we buy, like the Karagoto from the area, for instance. Uh, this is located in Kiambu, which is not far away, but uh, I think because of the altitude and uh, that they have more narrow kind of varieties, um, they, they do taste quite different and very clean and floral. Hmm. I love this coffee. I know we sent this out to, I think, our three bag subscribers a couple of months ago. It's tasting so good. I feel like it's opened up a little bit more now once the green coffee has rested a little bit. So it's even easier to pick out uh, the fruit flavors. So now I get a lot of this kind of blackcurrant leaf uh, flavor. You know, when you go to a blackcurrant bush and you, you kind of touch the leaves and they smell in a certain way. Uh, blackberries, for sure. It's very kind of ripe purple berries. And a little bit of rose hip uh, kind of acidity and stuff, but uh, I think mainly purple berries is what you could think about when you taste this coffee. Mm. And it's so juicy. Quite tart acidity, but in a good way. That means, you know, you feel like uh, eating very ripe grapes or 
these kind of uh, high acidity berries, but there's a lot of flavors, a lot of sweetness, and also a lot of body. Uh, so I think this coffee is very nicely balanced. Cool, so that's coffee number one, Karinga from uh, Kenya, from Kiambu. Uh, I hope you enjoy that. The second coffee is a classic in our selections. And uh, I have a kind of a family relation to this farm because I stay on this farm many months a year, normally, not during the pandemic, but uh, normally I would go you know, four or five times a year and I spend three, four weeks at a time. And this is Finca Tamana in Colombia. It's a very different profile from the Karinga. So I enjoy tasting them side by side because <clears throat> they bring out different characters in each other when you taste them side by side. This coffee is mainly Variedad Colombia. And Elias also grow a little bit of Katura still on the farm. So there's a little bit of that in here, but very little. And that's because the Katura trees have a lot of problems with leaf rust. So instead of having to spray them all the time, and he still gets problem with the leaf rust, uh, which means the trees produce less cherries, the quality of the cherries that are on the trees, they're not so good because the trees, they lose their leaves and the leaves are the ones producing sugars and nutrients for the, for the cherries. So uh, that means the katuras are normally not the best quality. Having said that, when I cut these blind katura in Variedad Colombia, um, it's quite difficult to pick them apart actually, uh, especially when they're both in good quality, it's almost impossible. And that's probably because they use katura to develop the Variedad Colombia. They cross katura with Hybrido de Timor, which is a Robusta Arabica hybrid and developed this more resistant variety called Variedad Colombia uh, and that has kind of the same qualities as a Katura uh, but uh, also is more resistant against leaf rusts. And that's kind of the early stage of the Castillo you've probably he heard of before. Uh, Variedad Colombia and Castillo are quite similar except Castillo is kind of a later generation. Let's taste this coffee. Mm -hmm. It's so sweet. It's kind of the first thing I think about when I taste this coffee. It's almost like drinking coffee with sugar. It's so sweet. Mm. And it has very kind of sugary flavor as well. Like if you've been to Colombia, you can buy this kind of big brown blocks of caramelized uh, cane sugar juice. They actually boil down the cane sugar juice until a solid block of sugar and they call it panela. I guess the closest you can get to that here in Norway is kind of brown sugar or demerara sugar. Uh, but it has this kind of really kind of brown flavors of sugar, caramel. Also chocolate. There's a little bit of acidity and kind of very subtle fruit flavors. But predominantly this is more of a, a what I call a brown coffee where it's more like caramel chocolatey flavors. Nice acidity, very clean. And this is the last lot that he produced, uh, that we bought last year. Um, we normally separate these coffees by harvest dates. Uh, and then we also, once we kind of build lots, we separate on screen size, which means we can roast the smaller beans separately from the bigger beans. So one lot becomes two lots <laughs> when we buy it. Um, so this is the bigger screens, that means the bigger beans. Uh, and you know, they don't necessarily taste that different from the smaller screens on this farm. Uh, like in Kenya, for instance, you can buy AB, which is the smaller screens, and AA, which is the larger screens. And they can have kind of a different uh, profile in terms of acidity and intensity. But on Tamana, these profiles are quite similar. I find maybe the larger screens to have a little bit more acidity, which means a little bit more kind of juicy and refreshing uh, flavor. So this is Variedad Colombia, mainly. Maybe it's 5% Katura and uh, harvested last year, but it's still tasting really nice and fresh. And that's what matters to me. Cool. So that's the second coffee. And then the third coffee is a little bit of a surprise. This is actually a Kenyan variety. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the video, Batiam. So it's a hybrid meaning uh, it's a resistant hybrid that was developed in Kenya. Now, whether it's resistant or not now, it's kind of debatable because they have found some uh, leaf rust on these plants as well, but it's definitely developed 
to <laughs> with the meaning of being resistant against leaf rust and coffee berry disease. And a lot of uh, farmers are skeptic to this uh, hybrid because they are skeptic to the quality, the production. You know, they're so kind of well known with the SL28 varieties. And uh, Batean was recently planted, I think less than 10 years ago or around 10 years ago. So it's kind of, we have to wait and see if, if it's, you know, similar in quality and, and producing well. I for sure have tasted many good ones and I've also tasted some bad ones, just like any other coffee that I taste. So um, uh, the, what's interesting about this particular Batean is that it's not grown in Kenya, it's grown in Honduras by our friends Marisabel and Moises Caballero. And uh, they have a very, very small production of this because they only had a handful of seeds when they started. <laughs> And we have been buying their whole production for the last, I think, three years. And the coffee has been quite herbal and it's kind of not very fruity. Sometimes it had some floral flavors. But this year, it's really, really fruity. Uh, it has kind of almost like a candied flavor. Like uh, when you, you know, you make this kind of candied uh, orange peels or candied fruit flavor, I can say. And also has a little bit of floral notes. I'm not sure kind of what type of flowers it is, but uh, it's kind of like when I smell flowers uh, and have some kind of candy, <laughs> candied fruit in my mouth. That's what it tastes like. Mm. Super juicy. Oh, and so well balanced. It's, it's kind of quite delicate, but nice kind of lively acidity. You get that candied fruit flavor with a little bit of floral notes. Yes, it has a little bit of herbalness in the finish, but nothing unpleasant at all, I think. Let's go back to the tamana. Oh, then you feel like how kind of round and smooth this tamana is, and then go back to the karinga. Hmm. It's so tart and juicy and, and fruity. Let's go back to the batian. Mm. Well, uh, well balanced, almost has this kind of savoriness um, with the fruitiness on top of it. It's really, really good. So three very interesting coffees for you. I think the Batian is quite unique. It's not grown uh, in a lot of different countries. It's mainly grown in Kenya, but here it's been uh, produced in Honduras. And I think the total production is maybe it was like 500 kilos uh, this year. I can't really remember. We bought most of it, so it's quite an exclusive coffee that will go out to only to our subscribers, actually. Cool, I hope you enjoyed watching me taste these coffees. We were supposed to have a guest this time, but uh, unfortunately, our recording with the guest uh, was a little broken. So <laughs> hopefully next time she will join us, because I invited the Malin, who is actually organizing all the shipments for our subscribers. Uh, so she will be here on the next episode to taste coffees with me. Cool, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you will enjoy the coffees, and if you want to subscribe to our coffees, go to our website, there's a link below, and uh, you can sign up there. Thanks for watching, see you soon!